Hallelujah. I believe. Hallelujah. I believe. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Wings of Eagles Christian Church. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord on this morning. Hallelujah. We give God all glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is God saying about you on this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, to God be the glory. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. King Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor our leaders in this house, Apostle Vernell and Prophetess Juliet Austin. Amen. And we just welcome you this morning. Hallelujah. I believe. I believe. What are you believing on this morning? What are you believing? What is God saying about you? What is God saying about your situation? What are you believing on today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says that we are his. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. So believe means to accept something as true, to feel sure of the truth. To hold something as an opinion, to think or suppose. Strong's Concordance, a definition is to stand firm, to trust, to be certain, to believe in. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. To stand firm, to trust, to be certain, to believe in. So we are in a season to be sure of what we believe. The world and its temptations are striving to confuse our belief system. So as we dive into the message, I believe there are four questions that I want you to, uh, want to pose to you. So the answers may not come to you in the order of the questions listed, but just listen carefully and see what the Lord is saying to us on today. So those four questions are, what do I believe? Why do I believe? Who do I believe? And how do I believe? Hallelujah. So these questions are not restricted to a particular area of your life. You might want to focus on your faith, your health, your ministry, your relationships. So what are you believing God for today? What are you believing God for? And belief is just not something that you believe one day and then you then you don't believe the next day as we said early it is to stand firm to trust it's an ongoing action ongoing belief provokes us to want to do want more of what you're believing for so what are you believing for 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 Christians for us who believe it is Jesus 
So the more we believe, the more we trust, is the more that we want Jesus in our lives, the more we want of him. So when we believe the truth about Jesus, then we become seekers of the truth. Are you seeking Jesus today? Are you seeking the truth today? What are you believing God for? In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29, says, but for, but from them, excuse me, but from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him. You will find him if you seek him. With all your heart, that means your mind, your knowledge, your thinking, your reflection, your memory, with all of your heart and with all of your soul. That soul means your, your, your appetite, your mind, your, your being, your desires, your emotions, your passions, your character, seeking him. But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you seek him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Luke 24 and 24 reads, But him they saw not, and therefore we have reason to fear that he is not ris risen. Now these are the disciples that they had doubt. They had some unbelief. So when we are believing, when you say, I believe, they had doubt and unbelief does not have any place there. You got to believe. Stand firm on what you're believing. Stand firm. You can't allow what the world is saying. You can't uh, allow what is going on around you, the circumstances, and things, even things from your past should not influence you into what you believe. What you believe. In Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, this particular chapter is talking about Jesus, that he's risen and I'm just not going to read the whole chapter to you, but I'm just going to uh, choose uh, some highlights. Beginning at verse 1. Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them, they mean the women who came from Galilee, came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, and they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. <laughs> Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. We serve the risen king. Hallelujah. And then, this is what I want you to listen to. This is what I want you to hear by the Spirit. Praise God. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Remember. Our belief should also come with remembering what God has already done for us, how he brought us out of situations when we didn't realize that we were going to make it out. But we remember, said, remember, so today I want you to remember what God has done for you. If your faith is, 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 is not where it, it used to be, if you need your faith to be strengthened, Remember what God has done for you. Remember how you brought you out of that place, that miry clay. Remember how he turned things around from you, for you when it even didn't seem like it was going to be possible for you to come out of that place. But remember how he was a lifter of your head, that he's a shield of protection around us. Remember. So remember. Remember. And so then the scripture goes, and then verse 8, it says, and they remembered his words. 
that fortifies our belief. That helps us to believe. That helps us to stay in that place. I believe, I believe without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus will bring that what he did on the cross for me, his sacrifice, the blood that he shed for me, hallelujah, I can receive my healing. I can receive my emotional healing. I can receive my physical healing. I can receive my spiritual healing. Remember what the God has done. And then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of Jesus, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Verse 11, listen to this, glory be to God. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. Okay, the apostles, not believing. They told these the women who went and said, look, this is what I want you to know. This is what is happening. Why did they not believe them? Because surely the apostles may have been thinking, oh, we are the apostles. And these women are going to come and tell us about the risen king? So going back to the question, who do you believe? Who do you believe? Are you going to believe in what someone has spoken over your life years ago, those negative words? Who do you believe? Are you going to believe what you hear and see in the media? Who do you believe? Who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe those people who know that uh, they see what God is doing in your life, but they don't want to be there for you? They don't want to stand with you. Who are you going to believe? Who do I believe? And so as these women approached the apostles and wanted to share what they saw and, and what, what was happening, they just saw it, the apostles just saw it as idle tales. But who do you believe? Who do you believe? We're believing in the word. We're believing Jesus Christ. That's where our belief is. That's how we stand firm. Hallelujah. That's how we're not moved by what happens around us. Yes, there will be some things in our lives that are tough, some things that are hard, but my God, hallelujah. But God, but God, he will keep us. But God, our protector. But God, our provider. But God, who gives us wisdom. But God, who gives us strength. But God. Hallelujah. So if what you're hearing and what's been spoken into your ear gate does not come into alignment with the word of God, let that be foolishness to your ears. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so as they were, as, as we go on now to, um, down to the next verse, verse 13, this section here is the road to uh, the two disciples, the two, uh, they're on the road to Emmaus. And so now, behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together, and all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself <laughs> drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. My God, so Jesus is walking with us. <laughs> Jesus is with us, and sometimes the things in, that's going on, we can be discouraged, we can be dis in despair and, and, and despondency, because in the next scripture, it says, verse 17, it said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have made one another as you walk and are sad? Their eyes were restrained. Now, in some of the uh, commentary that, um, that I, I read, it, there are different opinions about this. And some say, you know, it was their, their eyes were, were restrained. 
intentionally. And, but for this, for we, what we're saying today, what the Lord wants us to hear today is that our eyes were restrained. And that's what happens today, the despondency, the discouragement, the sadness, hopelessness keeps us, if we allow it, in a place where we don't know that Jesus is right there with us. Jesus is walking with us. He's given us the, he left the comforter. He left the comforter. The comforter that will lead us and guide us into all truth. Truth will help us to believe. Truth, the truth, will help us to believe. I believe. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe that, that you can be brought out of your situation no matter what it is that God will bring you out? He's already made a way out for you. He's made that way of escape through his son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have the comforter. Hallelujah. We have the comforter. So our belief, and then we, as we know that we trust in the Lord, we trust in him, we trust in him. In Luke 24, 24, but him they saw not, and therefore we have reason to fear that he is not risen. For if he be, surely he would have shown himself to them so that upon the whole matter we have no great reason to think that he's risen, and therefore no expectations from him now. Our hopes were all nailed to the cross and buried in his grave that did not believe in the risen king, didn't have hope and understanding in the risen king. Listen, we serve the true and living God. We serve the living king. We serve King Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord Hallelujah. for what God is doing in our lives. So that we can believe. I want to just encourage someone today to believe. Just believe. You know, believe, believe him for every aspect of your lives, every promise that has been made. Not just pick and choose, but every aspect of your life you can believe. Hallelujah. And it's interesting that we talked about the promises of God as I was reading and studying and, and just, you know, about how many promises are there. <laughs> there was some different interesting um, information that I found. I just put it that way. So some, it was 3,000 promises. Then there were some that said there were, you know, like 7,000 promises. And I even saw one place where it said 30,000 promises. The thing is, there are promises that God has given to us to cover every area of our lives, every aspect. It does not go uncovered. My God, we just believe, have the faith to trust and believe. I believe. I believe. Do you believe? Are you believing him to heal you? Are you believing him to, uh, to set your family members free? Are you believing him to open doors that you know that, that you cannot open them? Are you believing him to heal those situations from your past that are still influencing you now and how you behave, how you relate to others? Can you believe? Can you trust? I believe. I believe, as, a, as the, the psalmist is singing, you know, I believe. You say, you say, God says, you say who I am. You say I am an overcomer. Hallelujah. You say I am strong when I'm weak. Jesus. You say I am more than a conqueror. See, it may not look like how, thank you, Holy Spirit, it may not look like how someone else is being blessed or how God is bringing someone else out of a situation. But what is God saying to us? What does he want us to believe? 
We have to believe him for ourselves. Get in his presence. Believe his word. Stand on his promises. Let the word work for us in the name of Jesus. Do you believe? I believe. I believe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So how to believe? Believe we need to attach the promise to the need, and we do this through prayer. God, how do you want me to trust you in this situation? Do we really ask him? Do we sit down and ask him, how do you want me? What do I need to do? How do you want me to trust you in this situation? Because the way I trusted you for that other situation is not going to be the same way. Hallelujah. Because that's the kind of God we serve. He knows all and he sees all. He's the author and finisher of our faith. How do you want me to trust you? It comes with relationship. It comes with relationship. But the most important promise is the promise of the Holy Spirit, the comforter leading and guiding us. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit has poured out the love of God in our hearts. That love that ignites our desire to trust God for everything, every, everything. Not, not looking at it as it's impossible, but nothing is impossible for God. Hallelujah. I believe. I believe. That love that is ablaze in our hearts that will cause us to move from from the uh, from from just standing from the premises of just standing on his promises with with confidence and, and assurance having that confidence and assurance believe in him with Jesus we cannot fail because we already have the victory amen we already have the victory praise the Lord isn't that good news that's good news we already have the victory. Now we need to stop fighting for victory. Stop fighting for it and just fight with it. Fight knowing that we have already have the victory. In James 4 and 7, it says, Therefore submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. He will flee. I'm telling you, if you stand there entertaining him, <laughs> you cannot entertain the enemy. You don't entertain him, but you have belief. I believe, I believe what God says about me, about my situation. I can trust him. And when, he, when we believe, when I believe, when we believe, we will be brought out into that wealthy place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But we can't allow doubt and unbelief in that process of believing. Because if we do, we'll not see the manifestation of the blessings. But I believe. Hallelujah. So going back to the questions earlier. Staying, staying abiding to Christ. We stay joined to Christ. Hallelujah. We go back to these questions. What do I believe? Why do I believe? Who do I believe? And how do I believe? And I pray that what has been said today will strengthen your faith walk, will encourage you to believe God for the impossible, will know without a shadow of a doubt that he is with us, that he, will, he has not forsaken us, in that walk. So if we want to see the manifestation of the victory in our lives, we stay connected to the vine. Stay connected to the vine. So I believe. I believe. Hallelujah. I believe. Thank you, Lord. I believe. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, I pray that we will have the faith to believe that we will not allow doubt and unbelief to keep us from believing. We will guard our hearts and our minds 
We will not entertain the enemy. We will not entertain the lies of, lies of the enemy. But God, we will trust in you. We believe you. We believe you because you sacrificed for us that we will have forgiveness of sin. You laid down your life for us, and now you are the living king sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding and advocating for us. I believe. I believe. So I believe you. We believe you. Thank you, Lord. We bless you and we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining our service today. We believe that your life will be changed through this message. If you would like to learn more about Wings of Eagles Christian Church, please visit woechristianchurch.com. Tap the About tab to know our pastors. Tap Contact to connect with us. Feel free to also see Inside Woe. On Sunday we have a virtual Thrive teaching on Facebook at 9.30 and in-person corporate worship at 11 a.m. with our full band and praise team. In keeping with our mission and vision, Woe has many ministries designed to train, equip, and provide hands-on support to every member of your family. If you would like to make a donation, then feel free to give via text message. Step 1. Text GIVE25 or any other amount to 919-551-3675. Step 2. Follow the prompts. Step 3. Register your credit or debit card. It's only required for the first time only. Join us virtually on Facebook at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening for Life Class. Visit us in person at 1418 Avondale Drive, Durham, North Carolina, 27701 Suite 15. Hey, if you're still down, don't stay grounded. Get up and soar high.